That's right folks, Tories out. I bet you thought you'd never see Paz49 make a video like this. But there we go, things are that bad and there are the Tories own making that it's going to take a true Conservative Party to fix things, but there isn't any. You see, this Conservative Party, they may have blue ties and wear blue suits, but inside they're all red, they're socialists. They have employed damaging and crippling socialist policies which have seen the cost of living just skyrocket. Unlike previous Conservative governments, they're not tough on crime, they're not tough on illegal immigration, but they are the party of high taxes. They are the party of micromanaging people's lives. And they have borrowed more than any other government. This country is screwed. And as for Boris Johnson's green policies, they're impossible. And people simply could not afford it. Now, one of the worst culprits in the Conservative Party is Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. There was just something about him I didn't like from the start. And I know most politicians, 99.9% .9 of them, are really disingenuous con men. But this guy, I felt we should all keep an eye on. And I was right. Because it turns out he's a bit of a tax dodger. And it's not only him. It's his wife as well. This smug git thought he was doing us all a favour by taking five pence off the price of petrol. But it did nothing. The five pence came off. But the five pence has gone back up again. So if anything, the price per litre of petrol and diesel here in the UK has gone back to the price it was before the uh, Chancellor's budget speech. And in some areas, some companies have hiked it even more. The price of national insurance has gone up. Everything, literally everything has gone up. Food, council tax, and alarmingly, the cost of living wages. They haven't risen to match it. And that's a real concern. So while Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, raised taxes, increased what the government takes out of your pay packet. He and his wife have been dodging taxes. These two have been on the make for quite a while. For example, he gave his wife's company around £1.3 million of plague recovery funds. Now, I hope you can appreciate why I say plague here instead of the C word. If I say the C word, then YouTube will be playing funny buggers with my channel. So anyway, his wife's company, that went under. And her other companies failed to pay the taxman around £600,000. And now he's taxing us more. Now, not only does she owe the UK taxman money, but she owes some of her former employees around £30,000 in redundancy pay. Now, this woman, Rishi Sunak's wife, is worth around £750 million. But this tax dodging by Rishi Sunak and his wife, Akshatamurti, goes deeper because they had US green cards. And they were declared permanent US residents for tax purposes while Rishi Sunak served as a Chancellor. So if this is true, and it's highly likely it is, was Rishi Sunak eligible to stand for Parliament? I don't think so. This man should be nowhere near British politics, let alone the Chancellorship of the Exchequer. This whole thing is disgusting. It's a massive stain on number 11 Downing Street. I mean, his wife is worth millions, nearly a billion pounds. And yet she claimed furlough for her staff, which she hasn't paid them. And it's also a glaring fact that while Rishi Sunak is the richest MP in Parliament, his constituents in Richmond, Yorkshire, earn the least. So looking at everything, the British taxpayer has paid this woman up to £50 million. And she's claimed non-DOM residency, just so they could pay as little or no taxes as possible. Meanwhile, this man has the power to fiddle around with people's finances, raise taxes to astronomical levels, do nothing to help the poor in this country financially, and make themselves rich on the back of this country. I think it's disgusting. He needs to be sacked. He needs to be let go. Because no way is this man, or does this man have the moral decency to fall on his sword and resign if he had any honour. He doesn't have any. This is a blatant tax dodge. This is a piss take on the people of Britain who work hard and pay their taxes. And of course, let's not forget that photo of Rishi Sunak where he borrowed a little red Kia Rio from a Sainsbury's employee to fill up with petrol for a photo opportunity just before his spring budget speech instead of using his government-issued Jaguar. 
So this tells you that this man will go to huge lengths to lie to the voters that he's a man of the people, when in fact, he isn't. This man and his wife have absolutely no idea about the struggles and the lives of ordinary men and women in Britain who work hard to keep what they've got and pay their taxes. I mean, no doubt on Monday or guaranteed next week at least after talking to advisors all weekend because this is a huge story. He'll come out with a statement saying he made a mistake, he's sorry and he'll pay any money owed and that will be the end of it. And he will continue to be the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And he will continue to raise taxes and shit on the poor. Because this man, ladies and gentlemen, I believe, because of his ethnicity, is earmarked by leftists in authority, in government, in parliament, to be the next Prime Minister, taking over from Boris Johnson. Because this man simply ticks boxes. This Conservative Party, I told you, they're left-wing socialists. They are desperate to show Britain and the world how woke and progressive they are. So no doubt this man and his tax-dodging wife, they will both end up in Downing Street sometime in the near future. But what do we have instead of the Conservatives? We don't have much of an opposition because we've got multi-millionaire greedy fucks in government, while in opposition we have multi-millionaire greedy fucks there as well. So regardless who wins the next election, and I won't be voting for any of them, it's the greedy fucks who always win. So who do we vote for next? The whole thing is a catastrophe. It really is. And I would say to vote for the smaller, independent, right-wing, pro-British parties, but what do they have? They have no experience in government. And quite frankly, I think they're just spewing a lot of waffle. Plus, of course, it would take all of them to club together, come together, gel, put all their differences behind them and create one huge big party and make that party very appeasing to the British people. But they can't, and they won't. So the next election, I won't be voting at all. Simply because there's no party in Britain today that represents me or people like me. That's what I think. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Who will you vote for at the next general election? And if you like what I do, if you believe in free speech, then by all means, you can, you can buy me a beer if you want to support my channel. The link is down below. And that's that, so until my next video, please comment, share, subscribe, and Roger Trout.